Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and today we are in the fish room. Now it's been a while since I gave you guys a full fish room tour, so I decided in this video to give you guys a walkthrough of all my aquariums, show you what's going on today, and just some of my future plans. Now these videos can be kind of lengthy, so I'm going to try to stay as brief, but at the same time as detailed as I can with these aquariums. As always, if you have any comments or questions about my tanks, let me know in the comment section below, and enjoy. Okay everyone, so first I'll give you guys a look at my 125 gallon African cichlid tank. This tank sits across from the other tanks within the fish room. For this tank I'm using a Fluvu FX6 for filtration. I love those filters because they're very strong and very silent. They do a good job keeping this water crystal clear. I also have a circulation pump pointing upwards so I could get as much surface agitation as possible which does great with um, providing that oxygen for your African cichlids and just for fish in general. For lights, I'm using the current USA Satellite Plus. Very strong light. If you look at the rocks, they have tons of algae growing on them because of that light. I love the cool thing about this light is just the different settings. You can find which setting is the best for your fish. You have the different tones, colors, and just a cool light. I like to stick it on this version because I think that this is best for my African cichlids. Um, after that, I have a Pythos plant, which I'm growing at the surface. I added this plant because I wanted just, you know, plants are very beneficial with removing those nitrates. This plant, this pythos has been in this tank for about two and a half weeks. And look at the root growth, so it's definitely doing a good job um, taking up those nitrates. I'm also trying to grow some underwater plants. I have this little lily and this little glass pot. Hopefully that could take off. I just added this a few days ago, so it still has to get settled in, but hopefully it takes off. And I also have some water wisteria. This stuff grows like crazy in my planting tank. And because this light is just so strong, producing so much algae, I say let me just try to grow this water wisteria floating. Even if it just floats, I think it still look awesome with these African cichlids. So after that, the livestock, livestock of this tank. So if I take a step back, this tank looks pretty much empty. However, it's not. It's just that the fish are mostly juvenile, so they're very camouflaged. And they're all in the crevices and rocks, and they're still pretty shy. Um, if you follow my channel, you know that I lost the majority of my previous stock um, because I was careless with my water parameters so now I had to start all over I still got some of my other big eyes but the majority of the fish in this tank are juveniles and they don't show much color yet so that's the reason why the tank looks a little bit empty but as far as the tank boss and that's another little crazy situation there's no Pacific there's not one tank boss but I think there's about three different fish that share that tank boss position overall this tank is just very peaceful especially for African cichlids the aggression level is very low which I'm well pleased with but yeah once again there are three tank bosses that really share that rule and um yeah it's weird but at least it's peaceful so one of them is this electric blue not electric blue the um electric yellow lab cichlid he's been in this tank for quite a while now and I'm glad that he's able to finally hold the position as the dominant fish um and the other two are over here that albino Labiotrophia cichlid and this dragon blood. Those three share the role of just that dominant fish of the tank, keeping everybody in order. Other than that, everybody else is beneath them. I also have these six bar frontosa cichlids. Both of them are about six inches, one right there, and the other one spends a lot of time behind that rock. I think both of them are males. Now, these fish are big, so fish don't mess with them. However, they're not aggressive, so they don't really try to claim a high position as far as the hierarchy they just stay to themselves and fish leave them alone but yeah the th main three ranking males are those two and that one yellow lab other than that i have a bunch of juveniles so i'll give you guys a look at them the malawi dolphin showing signs of being a male very cool fish i went and got another malawi eye biter hopefully this can be a male i, I had the female before she was awesome but i think the male the colors of the male will look even better um what else i have an electric blue ali I said, how can I keep an electric blue Ali as my YouTube icon if I don't even keep this fish? So that's my replacement. I have this um, OB Peacock. I bought him from Live Aquaria. You saw the unboxing video. And the fish that I bought him with, the Blue Regal, he was killed because he was too small to eat him. I have um, this Taiwan Reef, which turned out being a female. I'm trying to consider whether or not I want to remove my females. Um, I know the males look better, but some of the females don't look too bad, like even this, um, what's her name, this Taiwan Reef, she's not a bad looking female, so I might keep her, that 
this right here, this Victoria, she's a female and she's been a thing for quite a while. The most beautiful female of all the African cichlids. She's not a Great Reef African cichlid, she's a West African cichlid, but that female jewel cichlid, you know, as long as you knew me, you know that I have kept this fish and she's just an awesome fish, always on fire with those colors and just very fun to keep. Other than that, I have a Eastern Happy Cichlid, the same situation, he's a juvenile so he's not showing much coloration, but he is a male and he has great potential so I'll see what he becomes and then two of my favorite fish are two more Victorians I have right there's a female Nerei but behind her she would just move out the way is my male which is a very beautiful fish I've been searching for a male Nerei for the longest and I finally found one he's just awesome and what's even better is that he's living in this tank with a, another male flame bag, which is very similar. These fish are known to be very intolerable of each other, and yet they're living together peacefully as for now. Of course, in the future, they may run into problems as they get more older and more dominant, but for now, I'm loving the fact that they're living together peacefully. Um, I also have a tangerine tiger. I bought it as a male, however, it hasn't colored up yet. There we go right there. Sometimes it shows a blue face showing hope of being a male, but for the most part, it's really dull, so I just have to give it more time to see if it's a male or not. That's a fish I really want to have to see it on some of you other guys. Keep these fish, they're really awesome. And then I have back there, which might be a mistake, a, what's the name of this fish? I forgot the name of this fish, but this is a Mabuna cichlid, and these fish are known to be aggressive. A Mason Reef Mabuna cichlid. I wanted one of these for a while, but you know, you can't, just certain things you can't do, like adding a known aggressive Mabuna cichlid to a tank full of peacocks and haps, so I have to see how that goes. Other than that, I have one bristlenose pleco somewhere in here, and then there's like a dog pile of all my clown loaches back there. The biggest is about 10 inches, and there's a few other like 4 to 6 inch ones piled on top of it, and I also have a big eye catfish in there with it. But yeah, that's all the stock list for my 125 gallon African cichlid tank. They are juveniles, so they will have to grow up a lot more before this tank becomes just a favorite tank of mine. But for now, it is fun to watch them grow up. So yeah, that's a look at the African cichlids, and now I'll take you to the rest of the tanks. So let's go to salt water. So this right here is my 40 gallon saltwater aquarium. I'm loving this tank. I'm getting a lot of growth, and it's just very awesome to watch. Um, so I'll show you guys some of the fish. This is my male fairy wrasse. This fish is a little bit aggressive. He's always trying to fight my clown, my clownfish, but um, for the most part, he's not too crazy. And he's extremely beautiful, very active, and one of my favorite fish in this tank. I also have the two pajama cardinals, which are just beautiful fish. I love their detail. These fish are a lot of times underrated, but they or that looked down upon, but they definitely are some cool fish. And then you have the famous clownfish. You can never get tired of these clownfish because their personality and just their color is just awesome. When it comes to corals, I have my Duncan coral which just keeps getting bigger every day. I bought it at two heads, now it has close to 20 heads. But if you look all underneath, every little space that this coral gets, it puts out another head. So I'm loving the growth on it. Right now, the skeleton is still a bit too small for me to feel comfortable with fragging it. But when it starts spreading out a little bit more, I'll be thinking about spread, um, Give it a nice frag. After that, I have this devil's hand leather coral. Right now, it's not as expanded as it usually is. Usually, that bottom part will come down to the substrate and the top part will go a little bit up more. Um, but yeah, this thing might need another frag soon because you see it's trying to block my trumpet coral. But I'm just loving the growth. I'm getting tons of growth from all my coral. Even my Montipora, they're growing slow, but they're still growing. I have that, this um, bird's nest. All those little edges are new branches. I have my Montipora up here. I want to give you guys an above shot, but I know that glare can be terrible sometimes. One thing I was looking at was that this green Montipora was kind of fighting with my red Montipora in terms of just trying to grow over it, which was killing a piece of the red Montipora. So I might have to frag some of that green Montipora so that they can stop fighting each other. But I'm just loving the growth in this reef tank. My um. Um, green star polyps are finally starting to cover nicely over that little magnetic frag rock that I have up there. One concern that I do have is with these yellow polyps, now they're starting to grow like crazy and they're starting to invade places that I didn't want them to take over. They're starting to kill these um, green polyps. So I'm going to have to start trying to find a way to frag them. I was thinking about putting some aggressive coral right there to keep them away from my SPS, but then I have to thread of that aggressive coral attacking my SPS right there as a digitata montipora. But yeah, 
overall nothing too serious to worry about this tank is extremely beautiful extremely peaceful and just very entertaining from the fish to the coral to the inverts everything about this reef tank is absolutely awesome future plans i may want to switch this gravel to sand but as of today is staying as it is but yeah awesome tank i'm already at 10 minutes and i only did two tanks so i gotta pick up the pace a little bit so this is my 125 gallon central and south american cichlid tank with this tank i tried to go with mid-size american cichlids i failed with that because i got a few big ones for filtration i'm using a marine land c530 and i also have um not also i also have oh yeah a marine land led light for this tank and as far as the fish i have my big geophagus what is this altafron for my 210 he was too aggressive up there so i brought him down here I'm not sure if I'm going to keep him because um, he's not as aggressive as what these other fish can become when they get older. That's my trophy is the boys I for my African cichlid tank. He was too aggressive for them so I just tossed him in here temporarily so he could lose his rank and then I'll put him back with the African cichlids. So he's going to be in here for a month. But yeah, he might go because eventually when these other fish do get older, he has a good chance of getting beat up pretty badly so he might have to go. But for now he's staying. I have... A Jack Dempsey, standard Jack Dempsey. Behind him is a black belt cichlid who's been growing like crazy recently. Um, what else? The fish in this tank are very shy and skittish. And it's still just a matter of them having to mature and grow up and just get more comfortable with me. That's one of my three salvanized cichlids. Right here is the tail of my big um, four line pick this catfish. This is another fish. All the fish in this tank are just extremely shy. So that's something that I expect them to grow out eventually. What else? You can't really see any of the fish because they're so shy. I have a few bristlenose plecos. That green terra is the son of my green terra pear, one of the offspring of my green terra pear. But yeah, that's my Central American tank. The only thing I like about this tank so far is the skate. Other than that, the fish still have to do some more choring. They still have to get more confident. But yeah, as of today, that's how it looks. Eventually, I want to get some type of plant to float at the top and just get some more confidence out of these cichlids. Down here, I have my Geophagus Thandeshnerai colony. Um, and this tank has just been having so much success. In this tank, I also have that Electric Blue Eye Jack Dempsey that was in the tank above. I brought him down because he wasn't doing too good. And as you can see, he's still not looking too good. So I gotta, I might have to move him to the hospital tank and treat him with some meds because he's having some breathing issues. And it just was a matter of him getting beat up. You know, these Electric Blues grow just so slow. And that, I guess, is the major reason of why he's the way he is now but yeah other than that these geophagus stand stand actually are just being very su successful when it comes to breeding this is my favorite female because she shows that nice golden coloration and right before i started this fish room up there i was able to get some nice footage of her spitting out some of her look at the a fry right there but yeah i got some nice footage of her releasing fry and actually fighting other males so i'll give that video to you guys maybe tuesday but yeah, this is just an awesome tank, full of success. So I had this one female holding. Um, what else? All in that back wall is just females everywhere holding eggs in her mouth. Um, right here, she's another female holding. If you look in that crack, there's another female. So there's about four females holding, two dominant males, this one being one of the dominant ones. And then the other dominant male stays in this, this that guy right there. So, so far I have two dominant males. I have four confirmed females and three more that still have to mature a little bit more before I figure out what sex they are. And then here's my little Texas cichlid that I'm growing out. You can see his pearls look pretty nice. Pretty soon he's going to be tossed up there so that his growth rate beca can become a little bit faster. With these smaller fish, he really has no threat, so he stay he grows nice and slowly. But when I put him up there, as long as he's not too small to be eaten, that's going to encourage him to grow a lot faster. Look. She just had her fry out again. But yeah, that's gonna encourage him to grow a lot faster and um, just to be able to fit into that tank a little bit more. After that, we have my 29 gallon stream tank. You just saw this tank on Sunday. I just ordered um, a few more of these, well, two more of these, particularly the hill stream loaches. But yeah, this tank is good. Plants doing nicely. I think the plants look a little bit more fuller than how they looked on Sunday. The thing about this plant is that, um, it really doesn't 
grab onto the substrate like other plants. Like if I just stick my hand in there, all these plants are not really attached to the substrate. And that's the tricky part about growing this plant. You gotta be very gentle, very fragile because it really doesn't root well to the substrate. This plant is growing completely from the light. Only about like two spots are connected within the substrate. Other than that, this plant is just, even if I was to move this whole clump and put on the rocks, it still will have the same growth because it's not really attaching to the substrate. It's kind of like um, growing like a moss where the moss doesn't really need the substrate to grow, it just needs lights. That's how this plant is growing. But yeah, other than that, you just saw this tank and it's doing good. I got my two more reticulated hillstream loaches. Maybe I'll get two more of those Borneo suckers. And that'll be it for this tank and I'll just let it mature and let these fish do what they do best. Then slide to the right again. We have my beautiful green tarot pair. We just saw a video from these guys the other day as well. Now in that video, I told you guys that they had laid eggs, they had wigglers, but then I came home the other day and saw everything gone. So I figured um, for some reason they ate them. But yeah, they still at least he's still looking good. His nuka hump went down a little bit, but he still has that nice little attitude. So hopefully they spawn again. The male was pretty furious. So maybe it was the female that ate them. He's more dominant than her now and she stays hiding because every chance he gets, he harasses her. So it's probably her fault this time why Fry died. But pretty soon, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be back at it again and trying to take another shot at Raisin Fry. But for now, he's looking awesome and I'm pleased with that. We bring it up here. We have my 75 gallon butter coal fry tank. This is a female and she is awesome. I want to give you guys a video of me doing water changes because this fish is just absolutely aggressive lately when it comes to my water changes. She just always tries to attack me. Right now, as you can see, I'm trying to feed her for you guys. She's, um, she loves these, um, what is these? Tube effects worms? She loves these, so give you guys a look at. Look at everyone, so my video just cut off because um, my memory card was full, but yeah, let me show you guys this fish eating some of these. Oh, look at it going crazy, look at that. I think about these big fish, they're so jittery and big. Oh yeah, I dropped two of those in here, and right now she just spooked herself after um, creating that little big splash. So she's not gonna eat it right now. She's still a little shy. Let me see. But just a very beautiful fish. Usually when he's about a cold fry, get this size, um, they become just all gray. She still has some nice stripes. And when she's attacking me, those stripes get even more vibrant. Look at this. And just a very cool fish. Eventually, if I was to ever get a big tank with big cichlids, she's gonna be the first one to go into that tank. My goal is to get maybe an eight foot aquarium. If I do get that eight foot tank, I gotta replace some of these other tanks. Um, get them out the way but she will be the first fish to go in there because for her size and for her um look she's finally got it but yeah for her size and for the title of these fish for the reputation of these fish she's pretty good as far as her behavior it's just pretty awesome after that we have my 55 gallon planting tank um for the past few days this plane has been a little bit cloudy um, i did a water change the other day and ever since then the water has been cloudy i'm not sure if it's because of these discus. These discus spend their entire day hunting fry. And when they hunt a fry, they dive into the substrate. This is a dirty substrate. So you know that dirt comes up. So I'm not sure if that's the reason or if it's something with my filters. But I'll check it out a little later on. Other than that, this tank is doing awesome. The plant growth is awesome. I have my nice dwarf sedge carpet filling in nicely. Um, my Crips Feral is doing awesome as always. This plant is just awesome because it doesn't take a lot of these plants to make a jungle effect. There's only about 20 stems and it has over like 50 leaves. So these individual plants do a great job with that jungle effect and don't really need, like other plants like Jungle Vow, you have to have 50 different plants to have a full thick jungle. This plant, just like 20 individual plants and just so many leaves from these individual plants to create a nice jungle. So yeah, I have that and then I have my Anubius on this branch. You can see some of the leaves are covered in algae and that's because my current isn't strong enough so maybe I'll I was thinking about removing this Anubius and putting it in a different tank, so I still have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Uh, my Amazon Sword has just had a growth spurt recently. All the leaves are very large. If I stick my hand in here and pull one out, you can see it's taller than the tank, so it's about over 20 inches long. So definitely some nice growth from the Amazon Sword. And as far as the fish, 
you can clearly see that the platys are just bright and beautiful their population is just always growing i tried to add a few more different species of platy i have these yellow calico platys a few of those and i also have some blue platys which really aren't as blue as i saw online but at least i'll get some a different variation with these platys instead of all these red ones and then i have my harlequin rasbora these platys do make these harlequin and rasbora look a little bit dull because of the color difference but they are still awesome fish the one concern that i do have with the fish in this tank world or with a pacific group of fish in this tank or with my discus these discus are just super stubborn when it comes to eating they really don't accept anything and if you look at them they're pretty skinny and a skinny discus is an unhealthy discus so that's a big concern i have this guy in here and then i have a blue one a cobalt blue somewhere and these haven't really grown much since when i bought them and if you look at my 210 those two up there are just growing like crazy so it definitely is a concern they refuse everything i offer i offer them flakes pellets um, blood worms beef heart and they refuse it all it seems like the only thing that they want is the little platy fry and they can barely catch them so i'm not sure if i'm gonna have to um, give in to them and try to give them some live foods or if um, i just got to try to try different prepared foods but that's my only concern with these fish the discus are being a little bit hesitant to eat my prepared foods so eventually i might just try to get some worms bugs and stuff like that see if they can eat those maybe try to get some um tiny little small brine shrimp or just something alive that they could go after but other than that this is my planning tank doing good and that's a look at all the tanks in the fish room and next i'll give you guys a look at the 210 Okay everyone, so already right now you're looking at my 210 gallon community aquarium. This is the largest of all my tanks and currently it's my favorite. Um, when I was setting up this tank, my main goal was to get as much diversity as possible. I wanted the big diversity in color, shape, and size, and I think it turned out pretty well. So if I give you guys a closer look, you can see just all the different colors I have. I have the beautiful electric blue acara, who is like the most favorite fish in this tank. Everybody who comes to see this tank, um, they love this fish and there's no reason, there's no wonder why. He's just so bright. Then I have the reds from all my different barbs. I have the Odessa barbs, torpedo barbs. I have some rosy barbs in here. That's a, a male rosy barb. I have the gold barbs. I have all different types of rainbow fish. The Bosmani. I have the turquoise rainbows, um, western rainbow, all different types of rainbows. I have a few giant Daniel. Just a huge variety, silver dollars. And I'm just overall a nice assortment. I also have some discus, which were the latest fish to be added to this tank. Um, right there is a snakeskin discus and then back there in the shadows is another discus which is the biggest of all of them he's about the size of that silver dollar which is about four inches tall so um, yeah just a nice assortment in this aquarium my goals for this tank is just to focus now on getting more plants in this tank now that's pretty challenging when i have a tank with four silver dollars silver dollars are just notorious for eating plants and they have proven it i tried to add amazon swords um, lilies, just all different types of plants and they munched on everything. So far they don't attack the java fern, however the java fern isn't really liking the current tank setup, maybe too much light. So then I'm going to try to put some um, floating plants, see if I can block out some of that light and see um, if my java fern will take off from there. But other than that, I'm loving the tank, it's doing good. I wish it was a little bit bigger because it's just so many different fish I want to add to this tank. I was thinking about adding my clown loaches because I have some big ones. Um, my African Sigla tank. In my African Sigla tank, they really don't come out as much as they did before. I have a big one who's about 10 inches, and I think he will look awesome in this tank. Really help with that size diversity that I wanted. But yeah, that's the look at the 210 as of today. I want to give you guys a better detailed video a little later on. I got to do it at night because you get that glare on the glass. But yeah, that's a look at um, the tank as of today, and I'm loving it. Once again, one of my, my top tanks at the moment. But yeah, next I'll show you guys the pond. Okay everyone, so I'll give you guys the finale of this video, my backyard pond. You just saw some videos of this pond. I've been doing some um, spring cleaning for this pond. Sit. Oh, sit. That's Charlie and Jojo. But yeah, I've been doing some spring cleaning. And for the first time ever, I've been keeping koi my father was keeping koi when I was young, so I've been around koi for years and years. And this is the first time I'm coming close to being able to feed these koi by hand. You can see that the water is nice and crystal clear. I have my nice little fall. I just did this waterfall a few weeks ago and it's already full of algae. Oh yeah, let me give you guys a close up on these koi. Maybe I'll give you guys some 
Now let me pet them for you guys. Now where's the biggest? This one, this big guy right here is the most comfortable with me. I gotta do it, look, touch my hand, a goldfish. Oh yeah, years and years of keeping these koi. This is the first time they let me touch them. Did a little bit of landscaping, added some nice colorful plants around it. And just overall, I'm loving this pond. I have some little chick plants to grow in the little cracks of the rocks. This dog is on my back. Um, well, yeah, nice little setup. Very relaxing. And you know, as the summer, as it goes from spring to summer, these plants will come a lot more alive. And just overall, will be a lot more of an enjoyable setup. This fish right here is the biggest fish I've ever kept. Close to three feet now. So just a very awesome environment. Very relaxing. But yeah, that's been a little look at what's going on with DWS Darius. So once again, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in that comment section below. Um, if you have any video suggestions, I'm now opening up to your suggestions. So if you have anything you want to see specifically from me, let me know. But yeah, I'm going to close it off with one more shot of the pond. Yeah, so have a good day, everyone.